so thanks for taking the call, Sid. I really appreciate your time. Um, my pleasure. I, my background has been primarily in digital marketing, and I've always been drawn to technology and operations. Uh, I got my start in marketing by building websites and um, self-teaching HTML and CSS. Um, so my question is, what advice would you have for someone seeking to make a career change from a non-technical role to a technical role? For instance, moving from marketing to development. Okay, and then moving to development as a developer or as a quality engineer or as an SRE or what are you thinking about? Yeah, I'm thinking more along the lines of a developer. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm reminded of a few people. I'll start close to home. Uh, my wife made a career change. Um, she did, uh, she studied social and work psychology. She was working in sales and she taught herself, she had an idea for a startup and no budget to hire anybody. So she taught herself how to program. And I think there's uh, lots of good ways to learn it. Uh, there's free code camp. There's Lambda School, uh, which is paid, um, but uh, good. Um, so there's a tons of ways to learn it. I think um, I've seen a ton of people do that. Uh, we've done, uh, or my wife ran an organization called Rails Girls in the Netherlands, and we frequently kind of uh, went to meetups together and hosted people together. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to learn how to program, but it's kind of, at some point you're also going to be super frustrated because it's hard to make progress. So it's very helpful if you have people who can kind of get you unstuck. Um, and in Lambda school, that might be peers or, or teachers. Um, another good avenue is like Coursera courses, which come with instructors um, who can help you get unstuck. And then the hardest thing is to kind of maintain motivation, like it takes a while, Lambda schools, nine months, I think. Coding boot camps that say they can do it in three months. I'm not a big fan of that. I think it takes longer to get to a level where you can be hired. Um, and then it's hard to find an entry level uh, developer position. Like when you're entry level, it's almost like a peak, organization hires you as an investment in the future much more than for what you're able to produce today like you'll um so find that role where you can uh where you're in a working environment and it might not be immediately that developer role so it might for example be a support role where you are working with code, but you're also answering tickets. So you're like adding a ton of value and you, you get to kind of refine your coding skills in the course of your work and then make that transition from support to uh, development, which a couple of people on our support team have done. It's super hard to say I'm a junior developer and I want to work at like a great tech company. Um, that's that's going to be tough. Um, the old, other alternative, like work for some company that's not known for tech, uh, kind of a uh, company that's not uh, known as a software company that just is very desperate for new programmers. Um, that would be the other option. Um, I think zooming out a little bit, I'm also reminded of uh, great tech CEOs, like any tech CEOs now, transitioning from AWS to Amazon proper, um, who's, who's like not, I don't, I don't think his background is as a, as a programmer or something like that. So you can be very effective um, as a non-developer in, in managing a tech company. Yeah, I hope that was uh, helpful and uh, look forward to the yeah. other questions. Yeah, that was super helpful. Thank you. Um, so for my next question, Sometimes um, as I'm navigating, you know, kind of what languages to learn, it's difficult to know what area you should go to. For instance, I understand that 
like SQL, Python, those are really more related to data science and HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are more related to web development. So for someone that is looking to sort of break into DevOps um, engineering or to become a developer, and if I wanted to contribute, for instance, to the, the plan stage of GitLab, what programming languages would you recommend um, for someone seeking to contribute in that way? Yeah, contributing to the plan stage, probably Ruby would be the most essential thing to learn. If you're not looking specifically at GitLab and you want to get into programming, probably JavaScript would be the best to learn. And as you said, if you're going to do data or machine learning or AI, uh, Python is the best uh, language to learn. And then HTML and CSS, they're not really programming languages, although that's debatable, but I would just I wouldn't focus on them and learn them to the extent you have to get something working. Gotcha. And that's, by the way, that's true too for the programming language. Learn stuff to the extent you need to get stuff working. Don't get stuck with a book for uh, three that's months. A good just, tip. just try try to make something and then learn what you have to learn. Cool. Um, as a follow up to that. Um, how do you discern which programming languages are best to use for certain projects? You mentioned that the plan stage, um, you'd be better off learning Ruby. Sort of how do you discern which programming language is best to use for certain projects? Yeah, so if you're on an existing project, it's whatever they're already using. Um, and in GitLab, that's Ruby for most of the things. And then it's if it needs to be high performance, it would be in Go. And then if you're starting a new project, you look at what the community is using. So you start a new project around machine learning, you do it in Python because that's the, the potential contributors and colleagues on the project would be familiar with that. Makes sense. Do some developers specialize in, in several programming language or do they focus their expertise on one or two? And I, I had this on the agenda, but I think you might've answered it um, when you mentioned that you know, only learn as much as you need for yeah. that specific project or what you're building. Everyone had, knows different languages to some extent. Some some programmers are super proud. They're polyglot, like they know multiple languages really well, um, and that, that that enables you to be better in whatever whatever you do, uh, because you you got to your own kind of a new layer of abstraction. And some people like me, I only know. Uh, Ruby. Um, so yeah, more more is better, but it, there's a big variance and you can be a very effective and highly paid developer by and only know one language well. Gotcha. Not that I'm a very effective and highly paid programmer. I didn't want to <laughs> create it to myself, but there, hey, it's not necessary. So don't, don't sure. take on that additional burden of I need to know everything. I think It's so hard to like the, the hard part about programming is like the amount of stuff you have to learn. It's not just the programming language. It's also like testing strategies, CI strategies, how web servers work, how servers work, how, how AWS should be configured. It's just people think it's about the programming language, but there's all this additional stuff. And that is kind of, that makes it very overwhelming. Um, so gotcha. don't, don't feel like you have to become an expert in anything, basically. Um, every, everyone is just messing around, trying Googling stack overflow, copy pasting stuff and seeing what works. Um, and, and that's, that's okay. And I would even have the mental image, like everything, you know, becomes outdated. So if you would know. You, if you would know everything about like 10 languages, your knowledge would become outdated faster than you could learn. Mm. So that's like a very depressing picture. And I'm sketching that to give up that goal to know everything. Right. Because it's, it's, you're, it's very wasteful because everything you know becomes outdated. So don't have too much knowledge in stock. So this isn't on the agenda, but as a follow-up to that, it seems like it would be more important to focus on what is your vision 
for learning programming, like what are you wanting to build or what are you wanting to do? And then kind of following that vision up. Yeah. It's, it starts with what you want to achieve. Programming is a tool. My wife was successful at learning programming because that was not her goal. Her goal was to start a startup and it was a, a necessary evil. Gotcha. So you should get into pr programming because you want to create something and you should be excited about that. And, and cool. the whole rest is just serving that goal. Program, learning programming is so hard that I've not seen people who focus on that be very successful. Gotcha. They, they give sense. up and I would have given up too. Um, great follow-up question I have for exactly what we're talking about is I understand that being a developer is not all about coding. So what soft skills do you feel are important for people, um, in these roles to have? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about the specific soft skills. Like there's a whole lot of soft skills that you need to work in a in professional environment. I assume you already have them because You've, you've shown that you have them to me so far in our interaction, but also like you're, you're fulfilled, you have a current job. Um, and then the additional things, I think it's really helpful as a developer to be good in written communication. A lot of the communication is through issues, through merge request comments. So being effective there, being concise and clear, but also encouraging and open and giving suggestions and talking about the work and not the person and all those things. I, I, I think that's really important. We link to a bunch of resources, but like if you can do a code, there's a lot of hints of how to do a code review, right? I think that's helpful and how to write good uh, issues or feature requests, feature requirements, feature proposals, they're sometimes called. So talking about code that's going to be developed is hard and you got to get a good at, and reviewing someone else's code is super hard if you can do those two things well in text that is super helpful okay. um and my last question is after spending some time observing you in the program um, you do a really great job of explaining and describing highly technical concepts to non-technical folks um, I often do this in my current role as a senior marketing operations manager. Sometimes I'll use analogies. So I was curious if you had any tricks or tips do you find helpful when you're explaining some of these um, more technical concepts to non-technical folks? Yeah, uh, testing, testing, testing. Um, so you were part of the non-deal roadshow. Um, and in the non-deal roadshow, you might have noticed I tell the same thing over and over again. And I first thought, oh, I'm going to be so annoyed by this because, you know, internally, I cannot stand it when something is not prepared to all we duplicate things. But I've learned to appreciate these things. First of all, you're dealing with very smart humans at the other side. So mm -hmm. that's great. But they just don't have the knowledge. And now it's up to you to transfer that in the shortest amount of time and with the most enthusiasm. I got lots of to learn there about uh, being enthusiastic when relaying a message, but also like it's, I think you're kind of like, you're like a comedian testing jokes, these analogies, like you want to see the aha moment. And right. if they're like, huh, do you mean X, Y, Z? You know, you fail, but you, you listen, like maybe they use an analogy that does work. So I'm still working on like the real estate agent and the escrow, escrow service. Um, but I'll, it's, it's constant A-B testing. And then th this repetition, like we did five kind of the same meetings in the same day, actually becomes useful because you do it in another way every time and you, you see what, what sticks. So testing is the only solution because it's, um, it's not about you, it's about the, under, the other person understanding. Right, that makes sense. I appreciate you answering all my questions, so thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. Have a good one.